Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Versi Adams. I'm an Exempra Global Certified AS9100 ISO 9001 Auditor and Consultant. And what I'm going to do today is hopefully make you my best friend. And the way I'm going to do that is to help you understand what you need to know to comply with Clause 8.6, Release of Products and Services. As with all the other clauses within the standard, this one is also very important. And this particular clause, um, I end up almost always writing a finding, whether major or minor, uh, on the audits that I perform. So what I want to do is help you know what you need to know to comply and what types of documented evidence as an auditor um, we look for. Okay, so let's, without any further delay, let's get into this. Okay, everyone, the way we're going to start this is I'm going to go through the clause in its entirety. I'm going to read the clause in its entirety. And then subsequently, what we're going to do is we're going to go into each paragraph of the clause and we're going to break down what you need to have in place and what types of objective evidence you're going to need to have in place to show your auditor that you comply with that uh, subclause. Okay, so let's start by reading the the 8.6 release of products and services in its entirety. So the organization shall implement planned arrangements at appropriate stages to verify that the product and service requirements have been met. The release of products and services to the customer shall not proceed until the planned arrangements have been satisfactorily completed unless otherwise approved by a relevant authority and as applicable by the customer. The organization shall retain documented information on the release of products and services. The documented information shall include a evidence of conformity with the acceptance criteria, b traceability to the person persons authorizing the release. Note, when required to demonstrate product qualification, the organization shall ensure that retained documented information provides evidence that the products and services meet the defined requirements. And the organization shall ensure that all documented information required to accompany the products and services are present at the time of delivery. Okay, so starting with the very first subsection of 8.6 states that the organization shall implement planned arrangements at appropriate stages to verify that the product and service requirements have been met. So what am I, as an auditor, what am I looking for in terms of planned arrangements at appropriate stages that actually verify the product and service requirements have been met? So typically you're gonna, we see a document in manufacturing environments referred to as a production order or a manufacturing order or a work order, or most commonly a job traveler. What these documents should contain are sign-off steps for performance and a verification of specific activities throughout the production process. And these are going to vary from company to company depending on what the company is building and what, what do they produce for their, for their uh, end customers. So typically you're going to see, I'm going to look for receiving verification of material and hardware. I'm going to look for specific manufacturing operations identified, such as assembly, welding, machining, finishing, soldering, oven heating, outsource processes, etc. It's going to vary quite a bit, again, depending on what the customer, I mean, sorry, what the cust company is building, okay? Uh, also, inspection and testing. So, um, as, at various stages throughout the build of a product or the assembly of a product, you're going to, I'm going to be looking for inspection and testing uh, operations. So, um, again, this is something that I'm, I'm going to be looking for. So, what a red flag is for me is if I see these job travelers well organized and well documented, but then I see operations specified on the job traveler that do not have a sign off by a specific uh, employee, whether it's a production person or a quality person or receiving uh, person, whoever it is. If the operation is specified and it requires a sign-off, such as an initial, a signature, a inspection stamp, and a date, and I don't see that on there for specific operations, 
that's a red flag and that's going to prompt me to look even further and dig a little bit more and um, it most likely will lead to a finding whether it's a minor or major will depend on how severe this problem uh, is when I start digging further and further but this that is a red flag so make sure that your production order manufacturing order work order or job traveler document whatever you call it um, make sure that all specified operations on that on that job traveler are signed off and dated as required because if you're not doing that then you're not showing me evidence that planned arrangements at appropriate stages have been verified um, as required okay so keep that in mind that's very important okay so moving along to the next subsection of uh, clause 8.6 as it states the release of products and services to the customer shall not proceed until the planned arrangements have been satisfactorily completed unless otherwise approved by a relevant authority and as applicable by the customer okay so what this means is that on your manufacturing order your work order your job traveler I'll just I'm just going to refer to it as job traveler that document states specific operations that need to be completed such as assembly operations uh, inspection operation testing operations and even outsourced processes that um, you need to send a product out to have an outside uh, service um, perform that process okay all of those operations as defined on your job traveler have to be completed and so what I'm looking for when I sample through these job travelers I'm looking to see that you know all of the operations are specified as required by the customer so what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the purchase order the customer purchase order and also looking at the customer drawing and then I'm going to look at that and then look at your job traveler to see that you've adequately flowed that information from your customer into your job traveler and that those operations have been signed off by the relevant person performing that operation whether it's an assembly it's an inspection it's a test operation whatever it is, whatever it is I want to see that it's it's signed off and dated and if applicable uh, quantity recorded on the job traveler as well okay now in a case where an operation is not performed we need to see a signed internal uh, deviation from typically your quality engineer or quality manager that signs off on your job traveler stating that that specific operation is okay to not be performed and you can ship the product in absence of the uh, performance of that specific operation now there's going to be cases where uh, your customer is going to have to grant that that authority to you to ship without the performance of that specific operation so they're going to give you a deviation or also referred to as a waiver authorizing you to ship the product to them in absence of that specific operation so you need to have that on file um, whether it's in an email or hard copy form whatever it is that that basically it does state that that specific operation the customer has granted you a waiver to ship without the performance of that operation and then you're fine you're golden you're you're okay to go ahead and ship the product as is okay going to into the next subsection of 8.6 as it states here the organization shall retain documented information on the release of products and services the documented information shall include a evidence of conformity with the acceptance criteria and b traceability to the person or persons authorizing the release so what does this mean so if we go back to the first one a evidence of conformity with the acceptance criteria so inspection and test records what I'm looking for is that the inspection and test records associated with that specific product meet the requirements as they're stated on the relevant documentation okay um, production order sign-offs for all required operations this kind of goes back to what I uh, spoke about in an earlier slide is that all required operations must be signed off dated initial signed stamped whatever is applicable I don't want to see blank 
operations on a job traveler. Okay, if there's an operation on a job traveler that at, at some time later on was determined not applicable, then you need to put NA in every field where that is where it's required. But a blank operation, no sign offs, no dates, no initials, no no stamps. That's a that's a concern for me, and it's most likely going to lead to a a finding. Okay. Uh, as applicable, if you in your organization, if you use inspection and test stamps for your employees, I want to see those inspection and test stamps on the job traveler. If you don't use inspection and test stamps and you just use op the operator's initials or their signature and dates, then that's fine. That's what you do. But if your process states that you guys uh, use inspection and test stamps, I'm going to look for those. Okay. Now, B, traceability to the persons authorizing the release. So initials, signatures, or inspection slash production stamps that are traceable to the employee releasing the product. And as applicable, source inspection. So there are going to be times when your customer states that the product cannot be shipped to them until there's a source inspection uh, release document filed. Okay. Um, in cases where the, the purchase order for that particular product or the drawing states the source inspection requirement, then I'm, I'm going to expect to see that um, sign off either on the traveler or as a separate source inspection report. Okay, but the key thing here in terms of traceability to the person's authorizing release, I need to see on the job traveler that I can trace the operations back to the person who released that operation to the next operation and the next operation and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. So into the last section of 8.6 release of products and services, as it states here, when required to demonstrate product qualification, the organization shall ensure that retained documented information provides evidence that the products and services meet the defined requirements. So they're going to be, several variations of, of documents that show evidence that the product does meet the defined requirements, such as inspection reports, uh, first article inspection reports, final test reports, destructive and non-destructive test reports, functional testing, performance testing, product certifications, and third-party qualifications. So it's all going to really be dependent upon what your um, customer requires and also what you as, a, as an organization require as evidence that your product does meet your customer's requirements. Um, product certifications, that's, that's a typical document that a um, supplier will send along with their product to their customer. Certificates of conformance, certificates of compliance. Um, destructive, non-destructing test, uh, re test reports, again, it's another document that may or may not be applicable but again, it is a document that shows conformance to the specific requirements of the, of the customer. Okay. Um, again, it's going to really going to be dependent a lot upon your, um, the nature of the product that you're making for your specific customer. Um, but when I look at the, the purchase order and I look at the drawing requirements and I look at your job traveler, that's going to tell me what type of documentation I'm going to be looking for when I'm auditing you for this section of the of the standard. OK, uh, again, now, so the organization shall ensure that all documented information required to accompany the products and services are present at the delivery. So certificates of conformity, release certificates, uh, a regulatory certificate, export control licenses, user manuals, source inspection reports. These are all some of the variety of documents that need to be uh, present and need to be shipped with the product when you're shipping it to your end user or your customer. Uh, the common one is the certificates of conformity. And if you are shipping a uh, product out of the state, out of the country, export control licenses need to be present um, in order for you to get your product out of and out and through customs. Okay. Another one we spoke about earlier is source inspection reports. This is a document that needs to be present um, if specified by the customer before you can ship the product 
uh, to, to them. Okay, so these are things that I'm going to be looking for. Again, all of it is, is really going to be determined by the customer purchase order, the drawing, and what's on your job travelers that I look at. Okay, everybody, well, that concludes this presentation on 8.6 release of products and services, what you need to know to comply. Again, my name is Bercy Adams, your friendly auditor. Um, I hope that you found this information useful and informative and can take this information back within your organization to better prepare yourself to pass your external audit of 8.6 release of products and services. Um, my contact information is there below for you, so if you feel the need to reach out to me, please do so. Uh, just give me about a day or so to respond. Also, um, if you like this if you like this presentation and want to hear other presentations by me, please click the subscribe button below and uh, that way you can stay informed. Thank you very much. Have a good day and be safe.